Good morning, everybody. Today is Thursday, November 1st. The first and only November 1st, 2018 that will ever be, that ever could be, that ever will be. Yeah, okay, that was kind of stupid. All right, first off, let's get this month started. It is Thursday. Get out there and get a cracking. You know, your motivation should be high today because it is the first of the month. That's when everybody usually starts out, like, sprinting. Like, that's the only thing they know how to do on the first of the month. Problem is, they fizzle out by the 5th or the 6th of the month. Don't get fizzled out. Do like a racer, okay? It's all about pace and breathing. If you're out there trying to get a job, if you're out there doing sales, if you're out there to get motivation, you're out there to get yourself up, to lift yourself up, if you're out there to doing whatever it is you do, there's a couple key things you got to remember for yourself. Everything in life is almost like a runner, a long distance runner, all right? If you sit there and run long distance and you go out of the starting gate sprinting, you're going to be burnt out. You're going to be wore out. You're not even going to make it the first couple hundred. You're not going to make it the first mile in a 15 mile race. The reason why is because you're utilizing all of your energy up front. This is not a sprint. What this is, okay, what this is, is a marathon. What this is, is a long distance run. So no matter what it is, if you're going for a job, going to join the military, if you're going to go in for a job, you're going to go in, have a, um, uh, put in a, turn in a resume. Sorry, I'm also driving and I'm paying attention to the road. What you want to do is you want to pace yourself. You want to get, go out of the starting gate strong. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to sprint out of it though. You want to get your pace and breathing under control. Do not worry about the people around you. Don't worry about who's passing you now or who's behind you. Don't worry about if you're first or last or in the middle. Don't worry about that right now. When you first come out of that starting gate, November 1st, when you first run and you first get your motivation up and you're going out there, the first in your mind you're thinking, man, I got to sprint right now because the end. no, you can't see the finish line. You're not going to see the finish line. Don't think about the finish line. The finish line does not exist in your book. The reason why is because right now you're convincing yourself that if you do more at the beginning, you're going to have that extra energy in the middle and the end. You're not. I'm not going to fool you. You cannot sprint. You have to pace yourself. You've got to work on your breathing. Now, as you're working on your pace, you're getting it under control. You're thinking about your feet work. You're thinking about heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. You're thinking about how high your knees are going up. You're thinking about your leg extension. Now, this is not a running motivational video. This is about what you're doing in your everyday life, okay, and how to make it better. Okay, now, the reason why I'm telling you this analogy is because while you're thinking about your legs and everything else, all right, that pace, to get the right pace down, to get a nice pace in there, to get yourself, you know, to where you're going just fast enough where you can slowly pick people off, slowly catch up to people, you know. You know, what you're doing now is you're thinking about everything except the race, which is what you want to do. Then you want to get your breathing under control. You know, deep breaths in, low breaths out. Worry about your hands, where they're at, you know, thinking about, because like I said, you have to keep the momentum so your arms have to go back and forth. Usually left foot, right arm, right foot, left arm. Okay? You do this while you're getting a job. You do this while you're in college. You're doing this while you're doing a project. You're doing this so that you have momentum to carry you across the finish line. Then, when you're in the middle of nothing, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the run, you don't see the start line, the finish line, your pace, your rhythm is going to push you forward. So when you're out there getting a job and you see no hope in sight of getting one or you're trying to get those sales and you don't see anybody signing up or you're trying to raise money for a fundraiser or you're trying to go to college, but man, these classes are every day. You don't see graduation in sight. You're going to grade school, high school, wherever it is, and you're going out there every day and you're like, man, I'm still doing this. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? You're in the middle of this run. You're in the middle of a long haul. It's like driving in South Dakota. These roads, a beautiful country, but you're driving in beautiful state, but these long roads and you're like stuck in the middle and you're like, is this ever going to end? And you give up on yourself. But if you get your pace under control, you get your breathing under control, you get your arms swinging and you just convince yourself that if I keep going like this, eventually 
I'll make it to where I need to be. Eventually, I'm going to find that ending point. I'm going to find the finish line. I'm going to find that job. I'm going to find those sales. I'm going to find those teams. I'm going to find myself making it all the way to the end of this great book. I'm going to find myself doing more with my children. I'm going to find myself believing in myself because once I finish the first race that I didn't think I could finish, then I can finish any race after that. You see, it's not about who comes in first or second. It's not about how fast you are, how slow you are. It's not about if you're running or jogging or walking or skipping. It's about the forward momentum, the movement that you are putting forward to get that first race out of the way. Why? Because then you know from there on out that when you're in the middle of nowhere and the race seems long and hard and you seem like, oh, it just you just can't do it, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, the last one did the exact same thing, so what's changed? Nothing. Nothing has changed. You're just going a little bit faster now. You're just going a little bit braver. You're just having a little bit more heart. You're just telling yourself you can't a little bit more. Each time you run into the race, you're just giving yourself a little bit more energy, a little bit more motivation. You're telling yourself that nobody else matters other than me. You're telling yourself, I can help other people once I help myself. And then I can convince everybody. If you think that I give these speeches because I've never done it, I'm just giving a speech. No, I've been through hell and back. I have been in these races every day of my life. Physically, metaphorically, mentally, anal uh, analogies. I've been in these races. I have seen the middle where nobody is at. I still get in these races every day where you're going for jobs, you're going for sales, you're going for business, you're going for success, and you fail and fail and fail over and over again, and there's nothing in way. And then that brings me back to Art Williams when he always says, just do it. Quit worrying about what other people think and say. Quit worrying about all the naysayers. Quit worrying about who says what, when, why, how, or where. What you got to worry about is yourself and getting across that finish line. You need to worry about not stopping. You can slow down. You can pace yourself. You can run in circles if you want to. Just don't stop. Don't give up on yourself. When you give up on yourself, then you'll give up on anybody. And the thing about it is, if you don't cross that race line the first time, you're going to think it's okay not to cross it the second time. If you think it's okay and you can get away with something the first time, you're going to think that way because you're programming yourself to think that way. you got to deprogram yourself and get back in a better mindset that you matter, you're important, the people around you matter, they're important, but nothing's going to happen unless you do it. Nothing is important until you make it important. You want those extra sales in life? Go out and get them. Quit worrying about what other people. I had people contacting me asking me if I could give them stuff. How are you ever going to learn? I've actually been that way myself sometimes in the past, years ago. Please help me. Please help me. But the problem is, you know, they did me a favor by not helping me. They did me a favor because I learned that wasn't my path. I learned that when I crossed that finish line, it wasn't for me. But I crossed the finish line every time. I opened every time. I succeeded every time. I made it where I needed to be every time. Every goal I have set for myself, have I accomplished? No. But what I've done, done, is I put my faith in God, I put my faith in family, I put my faith in my fellow citizens, and you know what? I got to where I needed to be. Maybe not where I wanted to be, but where I needed to be. And you know what happened in the end? I was a lot happier. And I'm happy today to get on here whenever I tell people stuff and you think, oh, he's just full of hot air. Really? I have failed more times than you have probably blown your nose. I have failed over and over and over again, and I'm going to fail more. Why? Because I accept failure as a tool to get to success. I accept the fact that I've owned businesses. They wonder. I accept that people gossiped and rumored and, and said all kinds of negative, bad things about me. You know what I learned? I don't need to be around those people. You know what I learned? I learned how not to fail at the businesses I was in by doing things differently while still maintaining a successful way of thinking. You see, if you fail... It's only a positive because it means you can go back and then when you do have success, it means so much more. You know, I have broken down many times to where I just looked up in the heavens and said, God, why? Why? Why didn't my resume go through? Why 
Why did I not make this special team? Why did I not? Why did I have to close this? Why can't I find investors? Why can't I find a great team? Then all of a sudden somebody comes along and I start finding a great team. I find a great business. I put my faith in God. I know that. But you want to know something? When you're in the middle of nowhere, it's just you by yourself and you have nobody else. I promise you you're going to find him. You know why? Because you have nobody else to talk to but yourself. In the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, when there's no starting line or fission line to look at, the plains of South Dakota are flat as flat can be. You see nothing, nobody, and all you see is this long road ahead of you. And all you want to do is give up, but you can't understand you're in the middle. What are you going to do, turn around go back where you can't see the start? Or are you going to keep going forward where you're... You can't see the finish. If you go back, you know there's a start because that's where you started at. But if you keep moving forward, you will find the finish line. If you keep turning in those resumes, if you keep going to college, if you keep going into after sales, you keep going after business and not want it for yourself but want it for other people to do better by others, you will be a better person and you will find success. But every day you get out there, this is November 1st. I know people have this thing in their mind where it's one. Oh, let's start on one. Oh, I don't want to start on two. I'm done. Why? You know why I love my business so much? And this is not a, 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 a marketing for my business. But I love it like this because I know that I am in charge of my own destiny within my business. I know that if I don't do something, I'm not going to get something. I know if I don't go out there every day and push hard, I'm not going to get it done. You know why I volunteer? Because I know I don't have to. You know, I can help people. And I know if I go out there and help them, they're getting help. If I do not do it, then who else is going to do it? Do I have to? No. But I hold myself accountable to do better for other people first. I, there was a comment on Facebook the other day. Somebody said, who eats first? The father or the children? You know who eats first? The children. The mother, then the father. Or if the mother is the leader, she will eat last. The father will eat last. You know why? In the military, in the Marine Corps, leaders will always eat last. You must make sure to take care of everybody else first. It will pay back in the long run. But if you eat when everybody else is watching you eat, they lose respect for you. If you're out there doing sales and everybody else is watching you do it and you're not helping them, they lose respect for you. If you're out there going to jobs and it's all about you and you know other people are going for those jobs too and you're putting your stuff in and you're like, oh, I'm and then you do everything in your power to get that job, whether it's legal, illegal, or whatever else, they're watching you and you're not going to get it. And if you do get it, you're not going to have any respect from anybody and no one's ever going to want to hire you anywhere else. If you go from one job to the next because you're just not happy and you don't even give it a chance, but then the first thing you got to do is belittle every job that you had because you didn't give it a chance. You didn't get the sales. You didn't get that job. So obviously that makes the job bad, not you. No, it just means you need to change the way you're doing things. It means you need to go about it differently. You need to say thank you and respect those places that were nice enough. If they don't, who cares? You're never going to see them again. You know, people in sales and what I do, they're like, oh, I don't, I'm going to, really? You ever going to talk to that person ever again? Well, no. So you have something to help them. But if you don't offer it to them, you're guaranteed to get nothing from nothing for nothing, right? Well, yeah. So if you do talk to them, it's possible you can make a new friend even, right? Well, yeah. If you don't talk to them, you're never going to talk to them. You're never going to see them again. And you get 100% of nothing is nothing. Go out there. Get motivated. Get energized. You know why I yell and scream and I get pumped up and I'm excited about stuff? Because I don't care what other people think about me as long as I know that they get the word that they matter and they're important. That's what's important. They laugh at me like, oh, what? But now they're talking about me and they're kind of smiling because they're like, look at this guy and his energy. Look at this guy and what he's doing. He's out there with a video camera filming us. You know what they didn't know? I was, I was coming in before all them. But I didn't care because I went back. You can do the same. I'm no different than anybody else. I'm no better than anybody else. I'm no stronger, no faster than anybody else. But you want to know something? You can be just like me. You can just have a bunch of drive and forward energy. Am I anybody important right now? Nope. Will I ever be anybody important? Nope. But will I make sure to put other people on top? Yes. Are they important? Yes. 
Will they pull me up when they get up there? Some will, some won't. But at least I know that I can look back and I can make a difference in somebody's life. You need help with a resume and you put them in five, six times, but I tell you to go put in that seven time, that seven times your dream job, I made a difference. You hear me on here and be like, man, this guy's uh, motivating. All of a sudden, I woke you up because, man, I'm listening to that Jeff guy and he's loud and obnoxious and everything else. And now you go out there not realizing, I woke you up. I made a difference. I got somebody to smile. I made a difference. I basically told somebody, please and thank you, and nobody else did. I made a difference. But it's not about me. It's about you. You see, I can say I till I'm blue in the face. It doesn't mean anything. But when you say you did it, when I can tell you how great my team is and how hard they struggle and they come a long way and look at them, now they're, they're on top. They're getting recognition. They're getting awards. They're basically doing the stuff they wanted to do a long time ago. And then all of a sudden they, they look over and they smile. That's all the thing I needed. I don't need anybody to say my name that he did it for me. I know they matter. I know I want to help them. They just needed that little extra push. Maybe somebody in your life needs that little extra push. Needs that little extra energy, that little extra motivation. Know this. Every day you matter. Every day you're important. Gosh dang it, this is November 1st. Get up, get out, get your lazy butt off the couch. Let me give you the drive and determination you need. I don't care what you think about me. I'm going to tell you right now. Get your butt off the couch. Get out, get up, get moving, get rolling. Do something energy. Go out and tell five people they're awesome. Go out and tell 12, 20 people they're beautiful. Go out there and do something to make somebody smile. Do something friendly. Do something kind. Does not take money. Does not take much time. But get your butt up and do it. And if I'm offending you because I'm not politically correct and I use words that, oh my God, did you hear what Jeff just said? He yelled at me. Heck yeah, I yelled at you. You know why? Because nobody else is doing it. And I believe in you. And I want the best for you. And I'm so sick and tired of everybody having their hands out for freebies because they think the world or they're entitled. You're not entitled to anything until you earn it. You work for it. And you want to know something? Even then, you're not even going to know until you're dead and gone. Your spirit looks back and be like, wow. I made a difference. And you know you made a difference because it doesn't matter what other people think as long as you went out there and did it. Because you matter, you're important. Who cares what somebody thinks about you? Who cares what their opinion is of you? Who cares? You know why? You're not with them anyway. You're not around them. And if you're around negative people, you need to change your friends and get around people that care about you and don't worry about what business you're in, not worry about what your sexuality is or worry about if you're male or female, black or white or religion. We have enough negativity in the world to not worry about that. But what we do need to worry about is you becoming successful, getting up, and you know something? It always remem reminds me of the guy, the, the story of the beggar on the side of the road. A man falls on the side of the road. The rich man walks around him. The successful man steps over him. People that could help him out walk around him. They go out of their way not to mention him. Finally, the poorest man of them all goes up, helps him up. But what people didn't know is the richest man in the world. Every day, we have people coming to our door asking for help. Every day we can help people in some way, shape, or form. Every day we look at life. There's a story of Jesus. It's a simple one. A man was told that the king was going to come to his house. So he made this beautiful feast and everything. And all night long he waited and waited and waited. Then there's a knock at the door. A young woman, she was hungry. Very, very poor and hungry and everything else. He's like, man, I, I can't. I got this beautiful feast. The, the, the king's coming to the door. I'm going to have a little bit of salvation. Okay, you know, great, great, great. But you know what? I'm really hungry. Can I? And he's like, you know what? Come on in. Don't, you know, a little bit's not going to matter too much. Go warm yourself by the fire. I don't know where the, you know, the big per important person is that's coming. But you know what? Just hurry up and, you know, here, come on. Person leaves. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. Where are they at? Where are they at? Where are they at? Come on, man. I need that successful job right now. I got all this stuff waiting for the success. I'm going to make somebody successful. I've got all this stuff waiting for me on my table. It might be food, it might be business, it might be something. I'm successful. Look at this. Come on, I'm waiting on the person to come to the door. Knock at the door. A beggar comes to the door. A person cold. Can I warm myself by your fire? You got this big fire inside. Look, I've got somebody coming. Hey, please, sir. I just wanna 
All right, come on in, come on in. Warm yourself by the fire, but don't mess anything up, okay? Just here, sit down. I don't know what's going on. I'm waiting for this guy to come to my house. He's supposed to give me a great job. He's supposed to, but you know, you know he's like, sir, thank you for letting me warm. And I know you're busy and I'll get out of your hair now, but thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, just sorry that I'm busy today, but you know, that's the best I can do for right now. Do you want a little bit of food too? I'm sure that he's not gonna mind too much. The food's getting cold anyway. Yes, oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, here, take a few dollars. I know that you're sad and you're, okay, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, a third knock at the door. Oh, finally, the guy right? No. It's not the guy. It's a lady that's homeless with her kids. Sir, please. He's like, man, they're coming, and I know at any minute now he's going to arrive and everything else. In the back of my mind, he's like, no, I want these people to go away. I want them to go away. I've got a big, important meeting. And he said, you know what? Fine, come on in. It doesn't look like he's coming in. But you know what? Here, you guys need this more than me. He goes, you know, I tried my best. I tried my best. I tried my best. Now I'm going to adapt this story a little bit. The lady and the kids all spend the night in front of the fire and the guy never shows up. The lady and the kids leave the next day. He makes a couple phone calls. What, what, what happened? Why didn't they show up? Why did he not show up? Why did they let me down? I had all this going for me. I turned in my resume. I ran my race. I befriended all these people. I did what it took. I had the perfect feast. But they didn't show up. Where was he at? Now you're mad, right? One last person. Says, you don't get it, do you? All three of those people were me. I don't want the best of anything. I want to know that you're caring. I want to know that you're willing. I want to know that you're wor you can work hard. I want to know you're willing to do what it takes. I want to know that you're not going to turn people away. I want to know that your heart is bigger than your business sense. I want to know that you're getting the job done. I don't want you to wine and dine me. I want you, and you did that, you don't understand. Every person that came to your door was me. Every person that came to your door was a test. Every person that showed up was me. And you let them all in. You may not have liked it, <laughs> but you did it because you did what was right for the right reason. And for that, that's what you're going to get rewarded for. That's why you're going to get the job. That's the reason why you're going to be successful because those three times were pretty much a knockdown. They were failures, right? Those three were failures because it was not the person you wanted. But they were the people you needed. And each time you gave a little of yourself when you didn't have to, knowing there was something more important. If you want to go in religious, then look at the story of Job. The devil tempted God by saying, you know what, you give this man everything. Everything. Of course he's going to love you. Of course he's going to raise, praise you. Of course he's going to worship you. He loves you because you give him. He's the wealthiest man in the world. Let me go talk to him. You can't touch him. You can't kill him. You can't hurt him. That's okay. Let me do everything else. And I'll prove to you that because you give him everything, he will hate you once you do it. He only likes you because you give him stuff. So he kills all of Job's animals. He kills all of his crops. Job goes, God, whatever I did to upset you, I'm sorry, but thank you. I love you with my entire heart. Devil comes back. He's like, oh no, it's because of his family and kids and everything else. He can rely on them. God said, you can't touch Job. That's fine. Goes and kills his entire family. Job goes, God, I don't know what I did to upset you, but I'm very, very sorry, but I still love you. Thank you for everything you did. Thank you for, you know, I don't need wealth as long as I have you. Okay. Devil goes back and says, the whole idea is you are not doing it right. You are not letting me touch Job. You know what? Here it is. This guy's in perfect health. You know, he loves you because he has no pain. He has no pain. He has no pain. God's like, you can't kill him. <laughs> Job goes back and gives Job diseases and famine and pretty much makes his life miserable and says, now, where's your savior at? Now, who you pray to? Job goes, God, please kill me. I did something to upset you. I've forsaken you. I still love you with my entire heart, but just kill me. 
I don't need anything else, but for some reason, I have upset you so bad to where you're allowing this to happen to me, and I apologize for everything I've done, but I still love you. But just please, could you just get me out of my misery? By this time, God had enough. Job proved that it's not about money. It's not about power. It's not about success or wisdom or everything else. It's about doing the right thing for the right reason. And if you cannot understand that the people in your life are examples and tests of your courage, and that's what's going to get your resumes, and that's what's going to get you across the finish line. If you can't understand the people you treat with respect and dignity, if you can't understand it's not about political correctness, it's not about black or white, it's not about Democrat or Republic, if you can't get that across your mind, and you're going out there to get the jobs, when you're going out there to get the sales, when you're going out there to help people, you can't help anybody until you help yourself, but you still have to help everybody. And success will come the way it's supposed to come to you so get out there get on the front lines get out there be better today than who you were yesterday and know every day you matter you're important I believe in you and if all it takes is one spark in the darkest of the universe to create the planets and everything else let me be a spark for you let me tell you this, I don't want nothing from you. I just want you to be successful. I want you to understand, I want to wish failure upon you so that you know what success is. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. All right, everybody, take it easy. I'm going to go into the store. i got to get some shopping done, and i got to get back to work. God bless. I hope everybody has a great day. We'll see everybody soon. Bye now.